CEO Money is sponsored by WF News One Incorporated. Views and opinions heard on CEO Money are not necessarily the opinion of this station or its management. Material on this program is intended for general information only and should not be taken as specific investment, tax, or legal advice. Welcome to CEO Money with your hosts, Michael Yorba and Mervyn Price, interviewing private and publicly traded industry titans. It's a fast-paced show focusing on CEO achievement stories, industry breakthroughs, disruptive technology, and emerging growth companies. CEO Money keeps you ahead of the curve on private and public equity trends you can't get anywhere else. We deliver tomorrow's trade today. And now, here's your hosts, Michael Yorba and Mervyn Price. Welcome to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba with Mervyn Price. Hello. Mervyn, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> All right. This is Friday's. What we talk about are financial companies, uh, companies that are funders, companies that are in the financial sector. Uh, on this segment, we're going to cover, as we move forward, uh, everything under the sun financial. Uh, our first guest is Gregory Thomas, Managing Director, 375 Park Associates. They're, they're looking to bring him on the show right now, but uh, Merv, let's step back for just a second and tell the audience what kind of people we've been talking to, who's coming up on the show, what kind of uh, content they can expect from us. Well, first of all, Gregory Thomas is <clears throat> very interesting profile. This is a man who links, in my opinion, uh, his company brings global economics and, and political unease and relates it to domestic growth, domestic product economically. They write a very good news uh, news thing and they have consulted on a global basis. Behind that, we have Pete Colella. Pete Colella is a very experienced chairman and, and, and CEO of the Coleman Group. The Coleman Group are among the, in my considered opinion, one of the premier boutique um, investment banking companies out there. They're based out of Philadelphia and Florida. Uh, Peter is an international travel, knows what he's doing. And that's followed by Ron Russo. He's C C and, uh, and social equity officer for a company called GLX International. And then following that is John Kosar of Asprey Research. Again, a very, very interesting risk management uh, company with very unique and independent perspe perspective. Sorry about that. That's all right. On um, on how they research in individual market sectors, indexes, industry groups, stocks, and a number of other things that their analysts are much sought after, and they do very high-level webinars. Great. All right, that's what you can expect from us today. It uh, looks like Danny, our our uh, trusted uh, board operator. I, Danny, it looks like we have Greg Thomas on the on the line. Is that right? Yes. Hello. Greg, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. No, don't mention it. All right. Let, if you would, give us a little background on yourself, who you are, and then what 375 Park Associates does for everybody. Sure. Uh, well, Greg Thomas, I'm the managing director of 375 Park Associates. Um, I'm in the U.S. right now, but I actually spend a lot of my time in Asia, and that's a big part of what my firm does. Uh, we work with U.S or European-based uh, disruptive technology companies in the energy, health, and water and waste sectors, helping them to access customers or capital out of the Asia-Pacific region. Yeah, let's drill down into that because that's kind of a generic thing. Some, sometimes they're, they're uh, delivery systems, sometimes they're filtration systems. What is it that, you're, that you find your niche in mm -hmm. with, with these different types of companies? Well, it depends on the it depends on the industry. So let's say if it's energy, right? Um, we've actually developed what we call the Growth Opportunity Index, which is an algorithm which measures uh, growth, and we've tied that in with AI, and that helps us to focus on what uh, sectors inside of an industry will target, and then even from there, what clients will go after. So in the case of energy, there are things like uh, solar, uh, wind power, and even uh, storage are things that we're really keen on. When you talked about, let's say, like uh, filtration, yeah, and water and waste, that's an area that we're really keen on is uh, filtration technologies. Okay. All right. Countries that you're working with that technology in now, which ones are they? Um, well, as I said, most of our clients are based in the U.S., well, Canada as well, and then in Western Europe. And what we're doing is we're helping them to access customers, so either set up distribution or license agreements with uh, companies out in Asia Pacific or to target investors in the Asia Pacific region. So that could be family offices, uh, some of the investment banks, or some of the larger private equity funds that operate from that part of the world. 
All right. Now, recently I saw uh, that, that you were, were talking about the G20 summit and then also the uh, impact of the United States pulling out of the Paris Agreement. Do you find that these, these, these monumental moves that are happening right now are impacting your business, and if so, how? Actually, to be honest with you, the biggest monumental move that's impacted our business in the, the, the last few months has been the withdrawal from TPP. And I recognize that that is a controversial um, agreement. But ultimately, in, in, in my mind, it was about who controlled or, or who wrote the rules of global trade for at least the next 50 years. And by us backing out of it, it's actually put it, – it's it's – rejig the playing field somewhat. In terms of our business, we saw this as a tremendous opportunity because we found that, let's say, China, which wasn't a TPP member, Chinese corporations were going to have to buy into TPP member nations to get some of the benefits for their businesses. And we saw this as a tremendous opportunity for U.S.-based uh, disruptive technology companies to access a whole new kind of uh, uh, group of investors and also new group of customers. Like? Well, you, when you got this agreement that was in place, it made it much easier to, to, let's say, export some of this technology and have some of the IP um, protections uh, that, that aren't quite as well spelled out today. So even just going into South America or Australia or Malaysia or, or, or even into Japan, which has traditionally been a very – well, a market with a lot of high walls, right? Um, you know, if people generally look at Japan they t or Asia, they talk about – Asia x Japan, and they generally carve Japan out as a separate entity in terms of Asia. This, the, the TPP in particular would have created a level playing field, and it would have actually helped American companies that, that saw that, that growth in the Asia-Pacific region is, is you know, looking robust um, outside of any sort of external factors for at least the next 20 years. And now that's kind of been reset, and companies are, the companies that we're talking to in terms of their Asia strategy, they're forced to take a step back, more or less look at a country-by-country country basis and figure out what's the best fit for them. What about recent Fed's, Fed decisions for micro-cap and middle uh, market companies? Well, our, our feeling is that middle market companies and micro-cap companies need to get ready for a higher interest rate environment. Um, and we don't see this as so much of a challenge. It just means that you need to have a better perspective on where on where your capital is going to be coming from and how you're going to allocate that capital over the next one to two years. Um, I, I, most people that I talk to, at least, you know, believe that if anything, the central banks are being too accommodative at this point in terms of of easing or making capital too easy to access. Um, the challenge, at least in some of the micro cap companies that we've spoken to in the past, has been where they turn to because a lot of times they get squeezed out of the market by the bigger players. Um, so for us, you know, we had an interesting call yesterday with a, with a consortium that does a lot of non-bank type lending at some pretty aggressive rates as well, which is good because that, that fits at least on the debt side of market for, you know, micro cap companies are looking for. On the other side, you know, if you're talking about equity, you've definitely seen a run-up in private equity, right? But what we're also seeing is that the broader rally in the stock market is, in, is impacting valuations across the board. So there has to be a, you know, you've got to step back for a minute and kind of take a whole view on this and, and what's going to be the right fit for your company. Sure, you want to maximize value in the deal or you want to maximize the valuation in the deal. But getting the capital today to grow your company so you're you're better positioned for tomorrow, at least from a strategic standpoint, is often a better is a better decision. Uh, Merv had a question about Korea. Sure. Yeah, <clears throat> it's been a great deal of instability over there recently, yeah. and a number of, of comments made. Now, in your particular instance, you're not afraid of mixing um, international politics with impacts on domestic economic policy and outcome. Mm -hmm. And in this, you're, you're recently linking Korea. And what is instability in Korea and how, what do you think it will do to global supply chains? Well, actually, we, we published a report on this uh, late last week. We think war in Korea is inevitable. Like and real that soon? Will be, that will lead to catastrophic um, consequences for the global economy. Real soon? Or do you think they're going to be able to push this off? And um, we've got about a minute left. Yeah, it's becoming harder and harder to push it off. 
Um, and I think right now there are still some policy levers and even some negotiating levers that are on the table, but at least what we're getting at our level of the pool doesn't seem like it's being, they're being taken care of yet, but there's still a window open to get China involved and maybe even Russia involved to negotiate a settlement to this so it doesn't get to war. But that, that window is getting smaller and smaller. And if it does go to war, the disruption to global supply chains will be catastrophic. Greg, I want to talk more about this and get into some of these other questions, but we just ran out of time. No problem. Thank, thank you so much for coming on the show. I want to invite you back later. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. I need, thank you, Greg. Gregory Thomas, Managing Director, 375parkassociates.com. Or excuse me, 375parkllc.com is their web address. Up next, Pete Colella, Chairman, CEO of the Coleman Group. ColemanGroup.com. You've been listening to CEO Money with Michael Yorba and Mervyn Price.